I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to look at Delay Designer and how we can actually use it to create melodies. Now, Logic's got a number of different delay options uh, in its delay folder, and Delay Designer is perhaps the sort of secret weapon there, allowing you to do things that no other delay can. Before we see what it can do, we're going to have a listen to this track. And I'm going to just draw your attention to this unbelievably boring part on track three, this airy picks part, which is just playing one note. There it is, just that little sort of ping. Okay, what I want to do is to see whether or not I can use Delay Designer to actually turn this single note into a little melody. But before we can do that, we need to understand what Delay Designer is and where we can find it. So I'm gonna come across to this track and underneath the compressor that's sitting on this track, what I'm gonna do is to drop down to the Delay folder and come and find Delay Designer, which is the first option up here, and I'm going to open it. Okay, now, what exactly have we got going on here? Well, Delay Designer, as its name suggests, allows us to design or create patterns out of delays. And I can see that by default, what's going to happen is that when I first open the interface, Delay Designer is going to create what we call one delay tap, literally one little echo, and it's going to play the echo back at the same volume as the original sound that's going to trigger it. So this is almost going to sound like I've added a second note to my pattern. Let's just hear that. Okay, now I can change, firstly, the time that I want this second note to play back at. And effectively, the grid along the bottom is showing me exactly that time in 16th slices. And the reason it's showing me in 16th is because that's what the grid is set up to do over here. I can see that the sync button is on to keep the timing synchronized in time with my track, and the grid is in 16th notes. So it stands to reason that if I take this individual tap and I bring it all the way back over here, what's going to happen is that we're going to hear this delay tap now add added one sixteenth note after the original note. Sure enough, and if I move it back again, it's now going to be one eighth note after the original note because it's two sixteenths. So what I can do is to actually go through and decide where I want each of these uh, taps to be. Now when I say each tap, what do I mean? Because at the moment I only have this first tap which is called A. Well, what I can do is easily add any other taps simply by coming along to any space where I want these to be added. And you can see that as I move over the grid, it, I, my cursor moves from being the pointer tool to a pencil tool. And what I can then do is to create another tap wherever I like. So here is tap B. And again, what I can do is to move this around until I create a pattern that I'm happy with. So I can keep adding new taps wherever I like, and then what I can do is to move them around until I'm happy with exactly where they go. So I might decide to create something a little bit synchronized like this. And actually, I want one more tap here. Now, the Delay Designer doesn't just allow me to add the number of taps I want, it allows me to do a whole bunch of things to each individual tap that I add. And you can see that across the top, at the moment we're looking at a parameter called Level. This is showing me the volume of each of these individual taps. And I can see that each one, as I move this up and down, allows me to create a dB offset, a volume offset, for each stage of this little pattern that I'm beginning to create. So if I wanted to, what I could do would be to just slightly attenuate or bring down the volume of these middle two taps, so effectively creating the illusion that the taps are going to get quieter, but then maybe what I'll do is to come back up to full volume for tap D, the last one. <laughs> Okay, that's working nicely. What I can also do, I'm sort of working through these parameters backwards, that's fine. I can also add a pan value to each one as well. So if I decided that what I wanted to do is to spread these out, have the first tap be over here on the left, and the next one be over here on the right, then I can do that. So effectively what I'm gonna do is just to create a sort of stereo width quality to this delay designer treatment, which is effectively gonna take each of these taps and put it in its own space in the stereo field. 
So that's working nicely. What I can also do is to cut them across to the left-hand side and affect the filter cutoff. Now, actually, this is deceptively cool because in addition to just simply having one filter, I've got two working on this sound. I can adjust how many high frequencies I hear by attenuating the top end and how many low frequencies I um, can hear by adjusting the bottom end. So effectively, what I've got a chance to do is to either use a low-pass filter by cutting out high-frequency content or a high pass filter by cutting out low frequency content, or what I can do is a combination of both, creating a sort of band pass filter effect, just letting through the frequencies that I want to hear on each individual tap. So in addition to their volume changing, what I could do would be to slowly ramp down the kind of frequency content of each of these individual taps, again, before the last one is a full frequency one with um, all of the sort of filtering effectively switched off, letting through the full frequency range of that individual tap. And you can hear the tone changing on each individual one. If I want to, I can make those filter moves resonant as well, just to add a little bit of extra spice to them. I'm gonna do that for those two that I've filtered that are kind of in the middle of my sequence. And now each of those has got sort of its own bite and it's um, sort of responding a little differently. But perhaps most crucially, what I've got a chance to do with Delay Designer is to bring an individual pitch transposition to each step of my sequence. In other words, what I can do is effectively, almost like MIDI, program a little melody for this part if I want to. And the way that that works is as follows. What I can do is to select the transposition value and then what I can do is to create a little offset in semitones, either flat or sharp, simply by dragging this dial up or down to create the pattern I want. Now I'm actually gonna create, um, I'm gonna leave the first tap, I should say, as the original pitch. I'm not gonna transpose that one, but what I'm gonna do is to experiment with what happens when I take this um, uh, tap B down by three semitones, and what I'm then gonna do is to take this one down by five. Let's see what happens if I do this. <laughs> Okay, well that's kind of interesting. A little bit ravey, really. I'm gonna take this one up two semitones instead. Let's see what this does. So what I'm starting to do is just to choose a little melody effectively by creating and just offsetting the individual notes that I'm creating. Now, what we can see immediately is that we've got this quite impressive capacity to turn any individual note into something which is now delaying in a whole series of interesting ways. But Delay Designer can actually do another thing which is really interesting, which is to introduce what we call a feedback tap. Now this allows me to choose one of the taps that I've created, one of the delay taps, and have it feedback, which means that it's going to begin to pick up an echo. Now I can choose which tap I want to use, and to start with I'm gonna choose tap A, which is here, but I can select any of them by simply clicking here and selecting a different tap, and then what I need to do is to turn on the feedback option. Now I've then got a level dial. This is literally going to determine how loud the signal is as it gets fed back into itself. So effectively, it's gonna feed back on itself and what I can do is to control the amount of level each time a tap comes round. Now by selecting tap A, I'm effectively selecting a tap which is in tune with the original note because there's no transposition offset to this particular note. Let's hear what that sounds like. <laughs> Now remember, what that's actually doing is it's creating effectively an eighth note delay from, a regular eighth note delay really, from this first tap. In other words, every time the first note plays, the note, the analog pluck sound triggers this note, and then an eighth note later, we get a delay which is just beginning to feed back. But because it's feeding back, it's now playing here and here and over tap D and again here. So effectively what it's doing is it's creating this really interesting, slightly polyrhythmic um, effect amongst the other notes which are being um, transposed. Now what happens if I choose one of the transposition taps as the feedback tap? Let's suppose I decide I'm going to take tap C. Well, 
This one is transposed, which means that every time it feeds back, its pitch will continue to rise because it's feeding back into itself, creating subsequent transpositions. And that's quite fun. So what we could also do would be to experiment with using tap B, which remember is a downwards transposition tap. So within this video, we've discovered that we can use Delay Designer as a means to create melodies. We can create a pattern that we like by drawing in individual places where we want those delays to go, and we can control cutoff, resonance, pan, and level. But what we can also do is to transpose all of those individual taps to create little melody shapes. And what we've also seen is by adding a feedback tap, what we have a chance to do is either just create a note that's sort of in tune with the original, which just complicates the rhythm, or we can choose one of our transposed taps. And what that does is to create this kind of really interesting cascading melodic effect. <laughs> 